Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes mini review. Uh, this review is going to be just a little bit longer than normal, so it's not really mini, but we'll group it under that category. Uh, just before we get to the review, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been sending me condolences on George's passing. Um, it's been, uh, e some viewers have even personally emailed me to share their thoughts, and I just want to say thank you. Um, it was, it helped me, means a lot, and I really appreciate it. So, what are we going to look at today? We are going to be looking at Brush On 40 from Smooth On. So I thought the best way to um, take a look at the Brush On 40 would actually be to use it because I wanted to open it up and um, give you a take a look, I should say, at its consistency and how it applies as it actually has been a little bit different than most of the uh, mold making rubbers that I've used in the past. So what we're going to do is, um, and as quickly as I can do it here, I'm going to make a mold of a couple of the elements of this building. Um, this is part of a larger project which I will be revisiting. Revisiting? Well, let's count this as the first visit. I will come back to and talk more about the project that's involved, some of the other elements I've been working on, and uh, we'll talk about that separately. So for today, Let's just focus on the elements, the elements that I want to copy. All right, so let's pick up these skulls and these little crosses and let's do that window because I'm going to need a window uh, somewhere else. So the first thing we need to do is um, we need to use some Sonite wax. Well, you can use any type of paste wax, bowling alley wax, anything like that, but you need a good release agent because urethanes stick to things very, very well. And that is not something that you want to have happen when you are making a mold. So let's get that off of there. All right. And um, you can see I'm almost out of it, um, but I'm going to just put a little bit on my brush. You don't need a ton, right? So there's, you know, I'm not really going with a lot here. And I want to just cover the areas. Oh, don't mind that. Let's take those off. Don't mind. Don't mind those bits. And uh, we're just going to, we're just going to rub it in. Now, of course, before you want to paint anything like this, uh, of course, you're going to have to give it a good scrub. Um, this is, um, um, you know, a more troublesome mold release than sort of just giving it a little bit of a spray as it were with say um, like ease release uh, from smooth on there's a couple others um, man release uh, and those are all aerosols and so they tend to apply a much lighter coat and you want to really oh probably this probably my brush is in the way um, you want to try to get a very thin layer um, so I'm just going to try to wipe off some. You really don't need much. It tends, in my experience, to not fill in detail, but it never hurts to try to be clean about it. All right, let's see if I can give you a little close up of what that surface looks like. So you can see, can you get a little glare on there. There we go. All right, so very, very thin layer. So we're done with that, can set that aside. Now technically they say wait until it dries. In my experience, it's not really important, but it's gonna take us a minute to mix up our materials in any case. So, Brush On 40 is a one-to-one -one mixing compound. Um, you mix uh, equal parts uh, by volume of each of the compounds. The yellow compound, and actually I'm gonna to have to take this off. Let's get rid of that. Is a um, liquid component that pours fairly easily. Now, this is the part that um, they want you to mix. Does say um, store store. Oh yeah, that's trouble here. I want to do this in one take since I'm making a mold here. Uh, store thoroughly. Uh, store thoroughly. <sighs> Normally, that would be an excerpt at the end. We're going to leave it. Stir thoroughly before mixing with part A. This is part B. So um, I use a, a spatula. I love this spatula. I have another one that's bigger. Got this at uh, Dick Blick, um, but it's nice because it's 
small, fits into uh, areas pretty easily. Sometimes it'd be nice if it had a uh, flat top or tip than a round one, but that's fine. I'm not gonna mix it too much. The main reason I think that you wanna mix it is that as the urethane ages, as you may remember from some of my previous videos, urethanes really, really react easily with moisture, including moisture from the air. And what, that, what happens when that occurs in this component of the rubber, it um, actually begins to crystallize. And you will end up, if it's really bad, the entire thing will actually become a solid block of, let's call it, ice rubber, um, completely unusable. So I can already see on the top of this when I open it that there's a very, very, very thin sheen of um, crystallization happening already in the rubber. All right, part two is a stiff paste. Um, it's a little bit kind of peanut buttery, mm, not quite. Um, in any case, um, I'm gonna use this first I have my pre-measured cup. In my experience, this has been plenty of each part in order to um, get a decent mold for small items like this. This is gonna be my mixing cup. And uh, we'll push this back and see if we can capture some of this on the small camera as well. And let's just, uh, so you can get a sense of the consistency. It's, it's a smooth, eh, almost buttery material. And uh, now somebody, is bound to say, you're not wearing gloves, you're not wearing gloves. Look, everybody has to accept their own personal levels of responsibility and personal safety. Personal safety is not one of my highest priorities in life. And we won't talk about it further than that, but let's just say working without a glove with this material, for me, is not a problem. You decide for yourself. So I've uh, filled the cup here, give you a little sense of what that looks like. Let's scoop that in. Now, the reason I do this part first is mainly I don't want to use two popsicle sticks. I know that sounds weird, but you know, there's some forest in Indonesia that is being leveled for these craft sticks. And so I try to be judicious in my use of them. Let's get all of that out of there. And so if I can get away with one, I'm a happier man. All right. And in fact, we're going to be Oh, gosh, I need another brush. All right, we'll grab one in a second. Stop. Of course, paper towels never hurt. Okay. And the reason I do it that way is then, let's close this up. <laughs> Moisture. Moisture. Is then I can just pour into this without having to spoon out any of it. And that um, will make it easier for me to only use one stick. Now, technically, as soon as I'm done with this material, I would normally spray um, dry gas into it. Dry gas is an aerosol that um, basically has no moisture in it. And so it allows you, I'm gonna set that down just so I can wipe this off. Uh, so it allows you to prevent moisture from being in there when you close the cap. Wipe your threads wipe your threads because as the material builds up it will break the uh, you know the tight seal and then um, you'll have moisture getting into your rubber compound much more easily so I'm just gonna give that a tight squeeze there let's uh, get this in here you know quite frankly we'll see how this video comes out but I'm kind of thinking of this as a little bit of a precursor to my upcoming Lord help me, tutorials that I'll be trying to shoot next month. Um, so I'm still doing some fine tuning on camera angles in particular um, and the focus depth. Um, but uh, I'm hoping, I think, man, I think I've got everything down for this video. All right. Um, so, you know, am I getting every bit out? No, but I'm getting most out and that's gonna have to be good enough. All right, I'm gonna throw that away. Wipe my hands off, a little uh, dirty rag there. And then um, I'm gonna give it a mix. And you really do wanna take your time um, and mix this pretty thoroughly. Now, 
One thing to consider is the pot life of the material. Anytime you're using um, silicones or urethane rubbers or any of these kinds of, or, or epoxies, right? You have a pot life and that means how long can you mess around with it in your cup before it really becomes unusable to apply to whatever material you are working with. This has a pot life of 20 minutes, which is pretty quick, but not lightning fast. So hopefully I get this done within a half hour because this camera has a half an hour timer. Oh, I meant to set up a watch. Oh, wait, hey, here we go. Isn't that a great stopwatch? Look at this. That is, I don't even know how old it is. It's Tanya, I think, picked it up for me. Somebody got it for me at like a tag sale or something. Um, look at that, how classic is that? It's a 30 minute timer. So when that gets to 20, I'm gonna start worrying. Hopefully we'll be done before then because this is supposed to be a mini review. All right. In any case, that is well mixed. Scrape down the sides, scrape down the sides. Sometimes I'll scrape down the sides, then I'll scrape off the stick. Scrape down the sides, scrape off the stick. Okay, so we're going to call that done. Now you're going to need a brush for this, and the brush you use is disposable. This is going to be a trash brush because there is no way to clean this rubber off of your brush when you're done. Oh, and at some point I had thought about talking about um, some brushes that I bought that are pretty cheap and great for this purpose, but we'll save that for another mini review as well. All right. Oh, now I'm thinking I should have spread that, spread that out a little bit more in case I get some over some other areas. All right. Actually, I don't usually do this with the brush I'm going to use for the urethane, so hopefully that doesn't cause a problem. We'll all learn together. So, then um, what I'm going to do is just dab it on. Now, the trick is with a material like this, and actually I've used this twice, maybe three times already on some small molds, and I have had some air bubbles trapped within it. So, the idea is to um, apply a small amount. This is actually probably more than is needed be honest with you and move that out of the way and really work it into the the, the fine detailed spots um, a good stippling action is going to be really your friend on this kind of a thing um, but I also find this material is a little I don't know how to describe it it's a little gunky can I can I use that as a word um, so it doesn't see I can see spots let's see here See if I can show you. All right, uh, poker. I hardly know her. Uh, here we go. All right, um, let's see here if I can get this on frame. So if you look right there, there is a tiny little, all right, I'm gonna try this one more time. There we go. There's a little tiny dimple where I suspect there's a little air bubble. So really what you're doing is you are looking for very small areas that aren't filling. And sometimes da uh, stippling it will help get that out. And other times I just, you know, give it a, give it a good scrape across them to try to make sure that they're filled. If there's a tiny bubble in this that I miss, um, you know, it, when you cast, it's not gonna be too big of a deal if it's not too big. There's ways to fix holes, um, you know, whether it's filling it with green stuff or it is, uh, what, what am I saying here? Or it's um, sometimes there are other fillers that you can use. Um, in fact, I found gesso to be an interesting filler to use for small bubbles when I've been doing rock casts. All right, I'm gonna count that as a pretty good initial application. Now, normally, especially with a silicone rubber, you'd stop at this point you would let this set up, then you would start applying the next layer. What I find with the brush on 40 is I can basically do the entire mold in one pass um, because the rubber actually has a, a fairly high viscosity. It's, like I said, it's very different than the other rubbers I've used. It's both soft and uh, it doesn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for when you drip is not the right word. It doesn't slump. That's the right word for it. Now, when it's first mixed, it will slump. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna, we're gonna put a little layer on here and then I'm gonna show you another mold I made. And we'll talk about that while this starts to set up. 
Um, but I find the 20 minute pot life allows me to get the mold done all in one go. So I'm gonna cover that up. Now the only, th well, we're not gonna talk, this is actually not a tutorial about mold making. I know, you probably think it is. But it's more about a brush on 40. Later, when I actually start doing a more detailed tutorial of actually how to make mold making, you'll find out what makes what I'm doing here good, bad, what other steps are needed in order to get this to be a usable material you can cast into. So don't take this as this is exactly what you need to do and that's it. Um, but this is a, so we're going to call this an interim introduction to, to mold making. All right. Now you'll notice also um, that there are some air bubbles in the surface of the rubber. Um, I haven't found those to be a problem and I don't think you should worry about them yourself. And you can um, see the general coating that I have there. If you had a large mold to make and you um, need a lot of time to get the initial coverage on and you're risking your um, total pot life, then you wanna just do a thin coat, let it set, come back when it's tacky, do the second coat. But while we wait for this, I am gonna go grab, so excuse me, A couple molds that I made um, a little bit ago um, for this project. So what I did is I wanted um, this roof shingles here because I'm trying to create pieces that will match the GW building motif as close as I can. And so when we, um, here's a little picture of what the shingles look like. And uh, that meant I wanted to make a mold of it. So I um, put on my wax release and I made a mold of it. Now the other thing I've noticed is this is a, oh gosh, I don't know the uh, property numbers on it. Take a look at my video. I'll tell you what, I'll put a link up. Um, there'll be a link somewhere over here uh, that will take you to the uh, video where I talk about the properties of materials because you really, it's helpful to understand what is their tear resistance, um, you know, how much can they stretch, all, all of those kinds of things. But in any case, so um, Here's the mold that I made. Now I worked really hard to try to get it into all of these little fine recessed areas. And I think I did a pretty good job actually. It's got uh, pretty much zero bubbles from what I can tell. Mm, take a look at it in the light a little bit better. Looks pretty good. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to cast into because I don't have very good lip around it, but I've got some ideas on that. So I'm not gonna worry about it right now. We'll set that aside. We'll take a look at the second one. Now this one would be more commonly referred to perhaps as a glove mold, um, since I'm hoping I don't have to do any cutting to remove it. Wait a minute, check my pot. How's it doing? Okay, we're all right still. So I can, I can gab a couple minutes more here. Oh, but you know what? Let's do this. Let's, let's put, all right, we're gonna show you the glove mold in a second. This is what we call a dynamic review I'm going to alter it on the fly here. All right, so I've got now a pretty thick layer, and quite frankly, it's really not um, all the way through its pot life, and I'll show you why I've been kind of waiting on it uh, just a little bit. Um, if you look, well, we'll leave that for a second. Let's, uh, let's get this covered. And then I'll show you what's going on with that bottom one here in a second. In fact, you can already see it. I don't know if you've noticed, but get over here, get over here. All right. And of course, you don't want big bubbles hidden under the rubber. That's not a goal. You'd like a nice solid piece. So, um, you know, as you're dabbing it, watch if there's a little gap. Oh, I don't know if you saw that little tiny bubble just showed up right there. So really, sometimes with this, because I'm doing it all in one coat, not recommended, all right? We're going off label, so to speak, on this. Um, I do kind of brush it out a little bit. So you may notice here that we're actually starting to slump. Um, so you can't really go full thickness until it starts to set up a little bit. So I'm just gonna lay it on its side here for right now while we uh, let that uh, gel up a little bit. And while we continue that, I wanted to show you, and I'd like to see, the uh, mold I made here. Now originally, um, and actually uh, some of my patrons saw this, I took a photo of it. I was gonna make this a box mold um, where I pour, uh, you know, you make a box and then you pour the uh, rubber into it. Usually um, I would use silicone rubber, but um, 
I didn't have any silicone rubber to pour. I didn't realize I was in that situation. So what I ended up doing is um, deciding to rip the box off and um, use this uh, brush on 40, which I'd been sitting on for a little while, and thought maybe this is a great opportunity to try it out. So far, I've liked it quite a bit, actually. And I feel like it's less uh, grabby than some of the other urethane rubbers I have used. Um, things like um, uh, Reoflex, and I've used, um, oh gosh, I can't remember. Uh, boy, I can't remember. I used another one that has a very high durameter, and um, it really uh, grabs anything. Um, but I gave this a very good uh, coating of mold release. Uh, quick tip here, um, the windows here are uh, transparent, so what I did is I backfilled it with some uh, clay so that I could um, then apply rubber to the front side of it without it pouring through the grate. Kind of an important thing. And we can now take a look at the uh, mold, and uh, I'm going to look at it first here. And I do see just just a couple bubbles. And I'm going to take that as a big victory, actually, because this grating area is um, a bit of a trick to uh, get the rubber in completely and evenly. As you saw me, stippling kind of would also lift up some of the rubber, and that's a pretty tight space. So let me give you a quick look here, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let me find them and point them out to you. They're really small, so really, we can't really complain. We, I, you won't complain with me, will you? Uh, there we go. In the frame, in focus. This is a little awkward. I'll have to think about that in the future. All right, there we go. There's a little bubble on the back side of this. There's a little bubble right in, right in here. And, you know, there's a few, I would call these micros. That I wouldn't even worry about. Um, but overall, you can see the wood grain looks great. The roof came out really nice. Um, so this is going to be a nice mold to cast into, but I'm going to have to build some kind of a base to hold it upright if I want to do a full cast like this. Um, but I am considering doing some partial casts. And someday you're going to see the rest of this project. Maybe not in the too distant future. I'm going to take you along with it as I work on it, um, and it's going to be a long journey. So I'm going to put one more layer on this, and we're going to wrap it up. Um, so let's just do... A little bit more. Oh, okay. Now, notice, right, we're starting to get to uh, more of a gel stage in the rubber. Um, and this is really about the last point. You really want to even be trying to push it into new detail. I can coat these areas because I've already dappled. Dappled? Can I talk today? One take. One take. The outtakes are mixed in. Um, stipple it in and you really want it to be as fluid as it, as it can be when you stipple it in. Um, in fact, when I first used this, uh, let's do it this way, I actually were, was using a material called Kick It, which is an accelerator for urethanes. Um, and what you do is you add a little bit of that to it, and it really gets it to set up much more quickly. And I've used it um, a little bit with some other rubbers, the Reoflex Rhodes, for instance. And I thought with most urethane rubbers, it's quite a long setup time. So I thought, let's, let's put a little in there so we can speed it up. And it went to the gel stage so fast that I really had trouble uh, working with it. And I ended up actually having to ditch that first attempt because it just was so full of holes. Um, so, you know, you got to think about that. What's your working time? How big an area you're going to work with? and um, how fast you want it to set up. Now this has a setup time. I don't know if you can see, but it's changing along the way here. I don't know if you can see my hand shaking a little bit. I think I'm over caffeinated. Mm, caffeinated. So, uh, where was I? Kick it. Um, oh, and um, demold time. So you have your pot life and then you have your demold time. How long does it take before you get to remove it? And most of the time, uh, with urethane rubbers, it's very long. So it's almost like set it you know, down and forget about it and you come back to it tomorrow. I thought, however, I wanted to get it out a little bit faster and I'm unfamiliar with this material. So I decided to put a little kick it in it and uh, it's set up faster, but wasn't really needed because the uh, demold time, let's see if they say it right here. Uh, 
it says demold time is overnight. That's not really true. I think the demold time on this is maybe four hours, but you won't get a full cure until um, full, you know, overnight, say eight hours. And you can speed that up by putting a warm light over it. Don't, don't bake it, but put a warm light over it. Bring the temperature up a bit and you'll find that it will set up faster than that. Um, and I've been able to take off pieces within a couple hours being very ginger to it and not a lot of complicated undercuts, uh, that sort of idea. And I'll tell you what, how much time do we have? I'm at 15. I'm going to take two Oh no, this timer says 24. All right, I've got another thing to show you, but we will talk about that in a future episode. So hopefully you learned something a little bit about Brush On 40. Um, I do like it. I haven't cast into it yet, but it shouldn't cast any different than any of the materials I've used. Um, but with urethanes, they're not self-releasing, so I'll be going back to the Sonite and making sure that I give it a good coating of wax, and then I'll spray a mold release over that to make sure I have full coverage so that the urethane doesn't stick to the urethane, otherwise you'll never get it out. Um, but in any case, I've had good results so far with Brush On 40. Um, I think it has um, a less uh, sagging than many Brush On rubbers straight out of the bottle, but you sacrifice a little bit of working time for that. But to me, the ability to do something like this all in one go that's a really big advantage. So uh, I will probably go be going back to Brush On 40 in the future uh, when I run out of it or until this part is corrupted by moisture. I probably have a couple months before this will be unusable. And that's the problem with urethane rubbers. You got to use them up. So that gives you a look, almost a mini tutorial on uh, Brush On 40, its consistency, how to apply it, and um, the end result that I have gotten from it. So um, if you're interested in that product, it is a smooth on product. Um, they did offer this to me as a uh, free sample. So I just wanna be upfront with that. Um, I don't represent smooth on, although if they wanted me to advertise for them, but uh, I do believe in their products actually. And it's the primary company I use for all of my casting materials. Um, so if you have any questions though, of course, on casting, using this kind of material to make molds, feel free, leave questions and comments down below. I always appreciate them and I'm caught up on comments. Yeah. And I have a new system in place to stay on top of these things. I'm getting to a new organized tier for Terranscapes and, uh, it's well-timed as I have finally finished all of the old orders. And I am going to apologize if any of those people, too, um, are watching this video. I can't believe how long it took me to get to them, their stuff, but it's done. So the transition now is, I think, come almost full circle for Terranscapes, and we're going to walk into the next phase. So hopefully you will come back and join me for that phase, uh, because you know I'll be back with another Terranscapes video soon. Boom. Oh boy. Whoo, whoo, whoo. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one.